Thorpe. I'm the Executive Director of With It, which is a Women's Leadership Development Network, and you're watching the Students' Perspective. Hi there, and thanks for tuning in to A Student's Perspective, the weekly series that connects students with designers, manufacturers, educators, industry professionals, and design media celebrities to hear their stories on just how they've gotten to where they are now. Through our conversations, we connect the past, present, and future of design to show just how much we can learn from each other to grow towards our fullest potential without prescribed limitations. Think of a student's perspective as a weekly design lecture series from the student's point of view. A student's perspective is a division of the nonprofit University Hall of Innovation, whose goals are to connect students with the design industry through design challenges and mentorship, and a collaboration with the Marywood University Interior Architecture Program in Scranton, Pennsylvania. All interviews can be found in their video format at www. A student's perspective TV. For more information or sponsorship inquiries, please contact University Hall of Innovation at gmail.com. Welcome back to another episode of A Student's Perspective. My name is Paige. I'm Steven. And today I'm here with Amy Van Dorp, Executive Director of With It. And so we're going to dive deep into how she relates all this back to market and um, what your organization really means and how it's offering the industry these connections. But would you like to just start with a quick introduction about yourself and how you first maybe brought yourself into this industry? Wow, that, that's uh, yeah, a tough we'll take one. take it back first, uh, first all the way. One of the, one of the things that I always tell students is you never know where you'll start. Mm -hmm. I actually am a graphic designer and I worked in publishing for the first 10 years of my, well, 20 years. And I started out with a magazine, worked for Elegant Bride magazine, did a lot of layouts, was doing all the graphic design, did some travel, then had a couple kids mm -hmm. and ended up um, taking some of my work freelance. And part of my freelance work was I knew some people in the furniture industry and started working part time with this uh, organization called With It and immediately recognized the power of networking because every job I got after that I got through my network mm -hmm. through somebody that I met and that was very important and I watched um, all the women in this organization start working together and they would connect with each other and do business together and help each other find resources and find jobs and that's very powerful and was inspiring. Yeah, so the goal of our podcast, I'm sure, as you already kind of know, is to talk about some of these endeavors and how one always falls into another. And usually at the when we reach fruition of the episode, it's that you never know when you stumble upon something how these relationships are built. So I think it's really special that you talk about networking so mm -hmm. early on, but really that's the core of what we're doing now, which is, is incredible. Um, so when that first began, what was that first kind of moment that one of those networks brought you back into this industry? Well, frankly, the editor of Elegant Bride magazine, mm -hmm. who I had worked for for 10 years, came into the furniture industry and she started hiring me for, for things. I had teeny tiny children, so I wasn't coming to market. I wasn't doing those things. But as they got older, I was able to take on more things. So she was one of my first people that brought me into the furniture industry. Um, and then my husband also works in the furniture industry. So I knew some of his contacts. Mm -hmm. And as you meet people and develop relationships, it's really about relationships. Mm -hmm. That everyone that you meet, you meet someone new through them. Mm -hmm. And I have seen people do incredible. I have just incredible <laughs> things that happen to people, including myself, through, through knowing other people and through networking. Yeah. And I think some of the things about networking, um, it's so it has a, it can have a stigma of just being like, okay, I just need to get get what I'm going to get, so I need to meet this person and do that. But it, it then works conversely of okay, I'm at this point, how do I pull up, kind of from behind? Right. And so one of the things, it, and I've been on the outskirts of with it for a long time, and, and just being at market and seeing everything you've done and the scholarships and having my own students partake, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the beautiful things that I've seen there is that it, it is so much about empowering those who are at that same level but then making sure that you're you're pulling up 
kind of from below as well. Yes. And networking is, networking has a bad stigma, especially among students, because they feel like, I think people feel very, um, they're unsure of themselves. And so they feel like, I don't have anything to offer somebody else that I'm networking with. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not so transactional. It really is not. You're, you're just meeting people. And yeah. pe we forget that other people want to meet us, too, and see what, <laughs> what it is that we're doing. Because you don't know where you'll find your next resource. Yeah. And with it, we're, we are very intentional about our networking. People come to me all the time with questions, problems, um, job opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking for a job. And you know, my proudest thing is to be able to connect people with that. I think that's a really good point you make, though, about the stigma that's surrounding it, and especially with students. And that's something I didn't even realize myself for a long time. Um, and I think that's because, one, we're nervous to talk mm -hmm. to uh, our elders mm -hmm. and people of power. <laughs> and we hate being called elders. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> Those who came before us. We'll, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. We'll go that. <laughs> but like you said, that's more of a transactional thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think at our university at Marywood, we try to open up that environment, make it more conversational, having discussions about like your work, your projects, your process, um, make that more of a conversation so you have a comfort level to discuss what's important. And networking mm -hmm. is that same branch. It doesn't have to, I'm gonna walk up to you with my business card and ask you these three questions on my list. It's more often than not that the best networking opportunities you find are through casual conversation that you meet. It, you end up stumbling upon them, it's not quite, um, forced. Right, yes. right. Well, and there are times that maybe you have three questions that you need to get answered. Right, right. And you meet somebody and you can um, ask them those questions then. Or mm -hmm. you can say, hey, can I can I email you later? Can I have yeah. your business card? Can I email you later? Mm -hmm. Or can I have five minutes? I have, you know, just a couple things. Yeah. Um, at least in with it, our culture is that we're very generous with that. Um, yeah. We want people to call us. And we bring students to our annual conference every year. We've done that since 2010. Mm -hmm. And one of the best stories that I have is that uh, we brought 10 students in 2010. We yeah. didn't know exactly how that would work, right? Yeah. So um, you throw all these students in with 150 really energetic, powerful, flamboyant mm -hmm. um, women in the industry, and it can be very intimidating. But uh, we took the time to shepherd them. So we hooked them up with a couple of members who talked to them about networking. What can they get out? How do they, how do they use the conference? Because it's not about using it, but how, what, what should you be doing? Who should you be talking to? You're not going to be sitting in the back of the room and just sit by yourself and don't talk to anybody. But how, how do you make those introductions and who should you talk to? So there was one student there who came and she... Uh, was getting ready to graduate from High Point University in interior design. She needed an internship. She was trying to figure out what she wanted to do. She got her attendee list, which is a printed list. First night, she went back to her hotel room. She read every single title on that list, circled all the people that she wanted to meet. And then she went through the conference and tried to meet all those people. Mm -hmm. Through the course of that, she met somebody who was working on a big HGTV project doing paint colors and for Bassett. And this woman was very impressed with her, said, hey, I could use an intern. Wow. Used her for an intern. She ended up leaving High Point University and getting a job with Bassett Home, working on that HGTV project. And it really launched her, her career. She did 10 years worth of merchandising, and now she has her own interior design firm. But, you know, that kind of, that's a very powerful story. Yeah. And it was just through talking with somebody at a conference and saying, you know, this is what I want to do. What advice would you give me? Right. Right. And I think for those of you who have not been to a high point market, I've heard it expressed a few ways this week. Um, so this is spring 2023 market and uh, several people have said that that High Point Market is the, the Super Bowl of, of home furnishings and, and whatnot. It's the largest home furnishings trade show in the world. Um, but 
there are so many people from so many realms, and it's, so it's not even just the um, the, the sit down kind of planned events. Okay, so we were walking last night, and and someone ha had to had to brush past me on the sidewalk and and excuse himself, and he, as he turned around, we ended up in a probably 45 minute conversation that started with my mustache uh -huh. and yeah. then progressed into how how he was gonna um, how he wanted to help the the nonprofit how he wanted to help everything we're doing the students and, and whatnot and and he's been embedded here for since he was 19 and and it's um it's those kind of, of side interactions that happen where okay maybe I'm not not confident enough to reach out to you when we're when we're sitting together in an event or we're sitting at right. the same table but I'm gonna see you three or four more times in this week and by the fourth time when we're standing at the coffee shop waiting for something it's like oh no I really enjoyed this and it's gonna then blossom into something and those are when the real things start to happen correct or you take their business card back and you reach back out to them later and Absolutely. say it was so nice to meet you um, this is what I'm doing you know if could I talk to you about it? Right. Yeah. I think it's incredible to have mentors too. I mean, you said that list that she built, that student, um, people that you ins that inspire you, people that right. are really passionate about what you're passionate about. And that can be the nerve wracking thing sometimes. And I think a similar scenario with just some of the networking that goes on here is s some of these bigger names are intimidating a lot of the they time. Um, and and just like that busy. Right, right. Hard to pinpoint. And that's always the case. But in those interactions, brushing by on the street, um, that's when you maybe get that 10, five minutes to have that perfect little conversation and right. that blip into something else. The like, end oh. of a seminar, when people are kind of milling around, that's a good time to talk to somebody. That's when it counts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I have met people in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just never know. And it's not that you have a 45 minute conversation, but... <laughs> But one or two times of saying hello mm -hmm. is what is sort of develops that face recognition yeah. and that relationship. Yeah, or market to market and, and right. whatnot. I mean, so it might happens twice a year. And so, yeah, it's that it's that there's the slow building and then there's the <laughs> quick building. Mm -hmm. Now, I know probably over the last kind of 10 years or so that I've been involved with market and teaching students for as long as I have and whatnot. I think there's conversely the other side of students who want to do everything by themselves and want to, to feel that if somebody else helps me, it's gonna take away from what I'm doing, and I've gotta prove myself and those types of things. And um, how have you had that kind of experience at, at all? And, and how, how have you started to combat some of that maybe? Well, I don't know if you would consider that a little bit of imposter syndrome, yeah. but people Absolutely. who, would, I, th I see that more of people are a little bit afraid of letting someone help them because, you know, uh, they feel like they have to prove themselves mm -hmm. and um, you know that's all a mindset and and it, you do get by that uh, I think the first time that you have someone and you may not realize they're going to be your mentor they're just somebody who offers you a snippet of, it, of advice that helps move you forward and that is those things are just invaluable and you know one of the real deep tenets of with it is mentoring and you, you network to create relationships and mentoring is a relationship and so it's not it's not something where you come into with it and you apply for a mentor you yeah. might reach out to me and say I need to meet somebody who um, knows a lot about textiles I'm getting ready to do something in textiles and I might hook you up that relationship might not go anywhere it might become a lifelong friendship mm -hmm. so you know, everyone you meet can help you. Yeah. You know, your mom, your best friend's mom. You know, Absolutely. You don't, your boss, you mm -hmm. don't know where it will come from. And it's important to keep those relationships current. Um, one of the most powerful things that I heard said at the With It Breakfast last market, we had four CEOs on the, on the main stage talking about being in the industry and how they got to where they were. And they were talking about mentoring, and one of them said, you know, the hardest thing is if you've mentored someone and then you never hear from them, and then two years later they call you and ask you for advice, and you're like, I don't really know who you are. So it's important to remember that nurturing all those relationships is important because down the road you may need them. Yeah, even those small interactions, just checking back in on both sides, I think, I think are important. And, yes. And not, I think, 
everyone is capable of mentoring. Not everyone is maybe wired mm -hmm. to, to do it in the same way. And so I think people need to understand kind of both of those situations where it's like you can you can hope to get something from it from an interaction and, and not get it but it's like okay so that just becomes the now what's my next my next way around it do I try this again with the same person or do I then try and make my way around that right. way but yeah well there's a couple things that are important to remember too is you can give back even as a student um, someone who say the president of Norwalk Furniture, Caroline Hipple, is very visible at a lot of our events. She is so open. She wants to talk to young people. I mean, a lot her she realizes their future customer is this kind of person. She wants to know things about how you want to buy. She wants to hear what you're interested in. What's your path pathway to purchase? What you know, what you care about, and so. She's getting something from knowing a young person as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's what young people are worried about. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I don't know anything. Yeah, I can speak Dude. to that fondly. And, I mean, I got a good grasp on that at the WOW Awards the other day mm -hmm. as well. And, I mean, already filled with an incredible room of people and mentors and my own mentor being there and being congratulated himself. But they all had such a poise to them and in every single conversation when they gave their thank yous it was always about a codependency it was about right. the give in mentorship and mm -hmm. that was very gratifying to hear on my end being mentored for i mean especially throughout college and especially throughout growing into the industry now and beginning um it's so special but to yeah. hear that they are just as grateful in the long run they was are. really really sweet and even just having the simple conversations like we continue to say but one of the other award winners right beside me um and him just having a small conversation when steven was up accepting his award i was probably a little bit more excited than normal and <laughs> taking the video and he was like that's his right yeah. it's gotta be him and that was really sweet just to have that small interaction while it was all taking place but yeah. i i um I'm very gratified by those events where you can honor people and I, I see so many giving people who um, they take so much time and care with, their, with the people around them. And that's one of the beautiful things about the furnishing, home furnishings industry. It really feels like a family. Yep. And people who leave it, they come back because it's, it's different than other industries. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like a small small industry you know? I was gonna bring yes we before. just met a couple well we met before the <laughs> right. pandemic and then right. that sort of made yeah. things fall we re-met <laughs> <But laughs> we, we became reacquainted mm -hmm. but you know now mm -hmm. w whenever we see each other mm -hmm. we'll be able to catch up and so and you know the resources I have and I know the resources you yep. have and you know those are wonderful things I've always felt that it's a community that offers and wants people to grow. Uh, yes. Consistently share that information, resources, just like you said. But there's, I mean, there's a stigma of a competitive nature that exists between maybe showrooms yes. and vendors, but I don't think that's the case across the board. I mean, I think speaking to any type of designer on a day-to-day -day walking mm -hmm. through market, it's about providing those resources and showing you the next best thing or saying, like reminding you of the hotspots around campus and telling you what to check out around High Point. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I think that's that's changed over the years. It has yeah. changed it's, over the years. It's, it's been, and, and we've talked to a lot of a lot of designers here. We've talked to a lot of companies. We've talked to a lot of, we've talked to the former um, uh, uh, directors of, of, of companies and, and, and market authority and everything. And, and they've said the same exact thing where it's, they've seen the shifts happen mm -hmm. and designers who have said it used to be you would find your vendor and you would you would kind of hoard them and you wouldn't yes. want anybody else to know about right. it and it's it's now a more um, a more inclusive kind of thing we want to share we want to um, everyone wants to mentor and so one of the things in, in, in my kind of remarks the other night was like yeah we, we are all every every interaction you have is a mentorship opportunity on both sides mm -hmm. and yes. it's listen my students I learn as much from them as they do from me and it's like there's a lot of I think um, but yeah, that familial atmosphere of, of, okay, this is what I have, I want to share it with you, and, and I'm not going to ask you for something, but if you have something and you share it with me, that's that's great. And it's just that, that mm -hmm. kind of symbiosis. And the, so at our school, it's they uh, do a lot of, it's it's founded by uh, Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and so they're, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very, um, very much about kind of 
that that tradition of, of working together and so it's something that we, we've been talking about a lot is interdependence and how everyone like no one can exist in a vacuum no and so we you always need, each need other. someone at some point mm -hmm. with with different types of um different that different levels of, of, of thing and it's okay it's, right. it's, a, it's okay to need someone it's okay to to open be open to that um it's just so many people are scared to yeah. to really like just lay it out there and, and say yeah i don't know i need help and, and yeah so it's There's like you, a you have to kind of vulnerability yeah. there right i mean it makes you feel very vulnerable right. but i think as especially as you get some experience you realize that some of those vulnerable moments or those times when there's failure mm -hmm. are, are the biggest opportunities and the biggest periods of growth. Um, you change your business, you tweak it, you something falls through and so a different you take a different path and all of a sudden you're like on a whole different level. Mm -hmm. And you know that is exciting. Has there been any moment that has stood out over your time with, with it that you're like, okay, that's that was sort of a um, like the light bulb turned on or there was just like you, you, you can pinpoint something that just kind of changed the, the, the face of, of what was happening and like well for the industry or for with it just or for students yes for students just yes yes all of, all <laughs> all of the of above and yeah all Paige knows that's, I, awesome. that's yeah. like one of my favorite things to say is my students would be like do you like this or this or should I do this or this and it's just Yes. yes, you have okay. to try it and then we'll know. So, yeah. <laughs> well, in 2006, when I sort of came uh, to the industry part time, I was I was helping out. Um, interior designers were just kind of coming to market and they were not welcomed everywhere. Yeah. And they weren't welcomed into a lot of the big showrooms. The showrooms wanted they wanted Macy's and the, the big retailers because, you know, they thought they had to sell their furniture by container. Mm -hmm. and that that was the best way to do it. And so that was a big, when they started getting that point, mm -hmm. you know, and you would come to market, there wouldn't be the seminars, you know. Who has time to go to seminars? Designers who are shopping. You know, you wanted the retail buyers. So that has, that just that little shift has changed a lot. And, you know, I was in Philip's collection and he said 80% of his residential customers are interior designers mm -hmm. and that a lot of times they buy more than s retail stores oh, yeah. you know they're bigger customers so that's that was an important shift um, as far as for students from with its perspective um, we've had a couple things big things happen in 2015 we had um, a member who brought who brought money to us for student scholarships mm -hmm. and she saw what we were doing for students just on a smaller scale, raising money, you know, two thousand dollars at a mm -hmm. time yeah. to to do our student programs. And she said, you know, she learned that there was a trust through Heritage Home Group and got us some money through that trust. And you know, when you have thirty thousand dollars you can do a whole lot more, give more scholarships bring more students to programs um, and that that was a big game changer for us so we went from giving two scholarships a year to giving anywhere from 10 to 14 actually in 2015 we or in 2017 we gave 17 scholarships wow yes yeah. and we also give scholarships to women in the industry who are looking for a high who are working towards a higher degree mm -hmm. that's an important thing as well so you talked about the introduction of students early on through With It, um, mm -hmm. and we often ask this to several people that we interview, but I think it's entirely crucial for you. How do you see either things progressing or improving? What do you see the future like for students and High Point Market? How are those going to merge and continue to merge? Well, I see more organizations bringing students to market. I mean, With It has had a um, student mentoring day every fall for since um, 2002 or something, all right? I, we have 100 students come. We have about a half a day program uh, that includes a speaker and round tables and showroom tours. They usually get to have lunch somewhere and a company owner or major designer will talk to them about what they're doing in their showroom. Mm -hmm. You know, just a real, that's good for sort of the lower level students coming in. Right. And, um, 
but I've seen you know other organizations who are bringing students back who are maybe just a little further along in their sort of journey and taking them to production facilities and they're introducing them to more designers and it's become a couple of day program so it's not just you know we are all working at this together Mm -hmm. trying to help revitalize our industry there are lots of jobs here there's lots of opportunities but our the people who work in this industry are aging Mm -hmm. and we need to bring in lots of young people lots of young perspectives and to build the pipeline that's the only way to go yeah, I'm a really big fan, obviously, coming from a student yeah. who was able to attend market at, at mm-hmm. one point. Um, that gap that you take, that leap that you take once you do graduate and then your first market, that can be extremely intimidating. So having the exposure prior is mm-hmm. so important. And even if it's just through learning a little bit more on social media about High Point and what it kind of entails, because you already know it's impossible to describe what this experience much is like is. and yeah, yeah. How, what the scale of this is like and how yeah. it doesn't just exist in in suites or in in show place it, it's, it's so not beyond. one building <laughs> yes exactly yeah and not even quite just one town there's connections and relationships um, all throughout high right. and beyond between the manufacturers and the plants and i think that's a great thing to start to expose these students to um more and more right right and now um high point by design is really opening things up so that designers and students can come more than just during High Point Market and see yeah. a lot of the production that happens here in High Point. Right, right. You know, I realize a lot of furniture is imported from Asia mm-hmm. or Mexico, um, but, you know, there's still a lot that happens here. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful thing, and I think sometimes there's a, another stigma around just High Point in general. It's like, well, what's happening in High Point, North Carolina? Like, that, and, there's almost a level of confusion so there. Yeah. yeah, and it's everything is located here. The density of it all, and, and it's beautiful, beautiful to call that um, nationwide. That this is honing in on that, and I don't think students also build that relationship to understand that this is the the beauty of it all and the epitome of where you can find everything. Right. You can talk to the manufacturers, you can talk to the showroom owners, you can talk to the designers, all in one place, and the majority right. of them are maybe not the majority of them, but a good percentage of them are here year round. Yes. And, you know, I travel, I travel to other markets. So Mm -hmm. I also go to the Las Vegas market, you know, they have furniture and it is not the same. It is, it's not the same, um, just volume. Mm -hmm. There is a volume here that is unbelievable. Yeah. And, um, I was telling you all that a student contacted me last fall and said she wanted to come to High Point for a day or so and she was just going to come on her own and you know what should she do and I said well why don't you walk with me for a day because that's a there's a lot and we went to seminars and you know just walked the halls and met people and I showed her some different kinds of companies that were working in furniture and um, and then the second day I got her on with with a member who had her help with her style spotter tour so she was you know on this tour and then she actually walked um, and shopped with an Mm -hmm. interior designer and those are the kinds of things that you know having having an organization or someone to go to yeah um, and it's not just with it IDS has a wonder has wonderful people that can help you as well so Mm -hmm. does the uh, ISFD the Society for Furniture Design, High Point by Design, the Bean and Stock Library, all of all of these organizations are interested in helping and in shepherding students. There's more yeah. than enough um, help to go around here. Yeah, there's an entire alphabet of organizations that are that are doing things. We right. had this discussion a little bit ago too, and I think um, and and each one of them treats their 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 presence at High Point differently and kind of organizes things differently mm-hmm. but um, High Point is one of those things that's sort of a chicken or the egg kind of idea of until you come here you don't understand it you might think you have an idea or you might not even have an idea and right. so that's when I started bringing students down I had never been here in 2015 I brought a group and then all of a sudden when they go back they start <laughs> telling people and then it just it's it's the whole the Pantene commercial where it's like they told two friends and they told two <laughs> friends and it keeps on going and going 
and I so, want to go to High Point. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right, the and, ball rolls. Right, and and then they go into other educational opportunities, whether they start teaching or whether they're working in in, uh, in offices, and it kind of continues to, to grow. It's like I was talking mm-hmm. to a designer last night who so that she had changed firms, and that firm had no idea oh what my goodness. High Point yeah. really was. <laughs> and well, it's... Yeah. There are firms that they shop internationally. Right. I mean, there's also shows in Paris and Milan right. and Germany, and of course in Asia. That's more of shows for furniture manufacturing. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of those shows are important to know about and to go to, and they they hit a little bit of a different demographic too. Mm-hmm. You know, ICFF in New York City might be a train ride away for you guys, yeah. and that's a great. It's a great introduction, but the ICFF show is about as big as this floor, Yeah, you know, of this building. And this is just one building of many, many, many buildings in High Point. Two million square feet of showrooms yeah. across the city of High Point. Which yeah. is hard to even imagine. Yeah, it's just, it's a number. You're like, oh yeah, that's just a bunch of zeros. Yeah. But it's like when you look at the map and it's, you realize it's, it's like, really okay, big. we are here and everything else is way yeah, out here. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's and it's all furniture showrooms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And di- or different kinds of products. It's right. not furniture. It's also lighting and textiles yeah. and accents, accessories. Accents. Mm-hmm. And it's been beautiful to see the um, the established companies who have mm-hmm. been here forever, and then the new companies start to come in, right. and then the, the 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 companies that start, you know what I mean, and and, and uh, just because of their proximity to High Point and, and whatnot. So I think just that growth and that that progression, I think, has been really beautiful. Um, so I got some some literature. So do you want to talk about maybe some of the the programming and some of the things that are associated with with it that that students can take advantage what of? Is with that it? yeah, what I mean, is maybe, with it? yeah, yeah. What is with it? Well, with it, the actual with it stands for Women in the Home Industries Today, mm-hmm. and it was started in 1997 by a group of women who had sort of banded together in High Point because there were not many women now. <laughs> My son was born in 1996, so it does not feel like that was that long ago. Yeah. And um, But really, back then, there were not that many women here. Mm-hmm. And they really had to fight and scrimp and uh, claw their way. Up. Yeah. So, you know, the women that would be here, there weren't interior designers. They weren't really welcome here even in 1997. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they would be uh, women maybe in the media or working in marketing or working the front desk of a showroom Mm -hmm. and you know with its whole purpose at that time was to bring bring women into the industry and support them and we're still doing that today but along the way we discovered yes women are coming in we've got them but they need a lot of leadership development Mm -hmm. you know back then we used to hear a lot about um, women lacked confidence. There were all these stigmas about around women that aren't true. You know, right. you're only as confident. You're you're not confident if somebody tells you you can't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, if your boss um, keeps having you train someone and then they promote them above you, mm-hmm. I mean, then you you lose that confidence. Mm-hmm. But that's not the case. And so we really started focusing on leadership development. And now our tagline is that we're a women's leadership development network. Mm -hmm. And really it's about developing those skills. We do a lot of programming that is leadership driven. Um, Our whole educational, our professional conference, which we hold every year has, is around a theme. It's always around leadership. Mm -hmm. But it's it's usually around a topic, and next this year it's uh, next generation leadership. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the fact that there's four generations of people in the workforce, and how do we get all of those people to talk together and work together? They sometimes use different language. They like to communicate differently. They expect mm-hmm. different things. They yes. want different things. But it's all valid. It's not that one is better than the other. And honestly, you know, that's an important piece. So we will talk about what those are, how they work together. We'll talk about how different people buy different things. Mm -hmm. We actually talk about, have somebody talking about um, retail and Mm -hmm. how, what 
kind of path to purchase does each different generation want? Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about inclusion in this multi-generational workplace and how do we make everyone feel included and create culture where people want to be here. And also coaching and how do we coach the different generations differently? So it helps people at all levels, you know, and at our conference. And this is actually the most important thing about With It you can come to something and meet the president of companies mm -hmm. and big companies and also students yeah. and all across the spectrum and and it's a you know it's flat we don't treat the ceos more importantly than we treat the students right. yeah and i was actually going to ask that question and maybe it now sounds like a silly question when's the right time to get involved with any time Right, and you yeah. say even from the student perspective. So. Yes, we have a thirty-five dollars student membership. Thirty-five dollars is for like stu the students and like first year out of school. Mm -hmm. We realize that they're not, you know, companies. You gotta. It takes a lot of guts to ask your company to pay for a membership. Right. So a thirty-five dollar membership is very doable for, mm -hmm. for a student. You're, you have access to all of our events. We give student rates to things. We give lots of scholarships. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing about with it is to get involved. So, you know, if you join, either come to things or join a committee. I love to have students mm -hmm. on a committee because they're such sponges mm -hmm. and they bring great ideas. And, you know, they're curious, um, they're energetic. They're yeah. curious and energetic. Um, in 2020, when the pandemic happened and everything closed down, um, with it had a conference planned. And we realized quickly we were not going to be able to get together at a hotel and mm -hmm. have a big conference. So I had a conference co-chair who was like, uh, I think she's 24. Mm -hmm. And she was one of our co-chairs working with someone who was very experienced. And we figured out how to put our conference online, mm -hmm. you know, and having someone young who was she was like real tech savvy, was very open and we fit you know, able, we were able to figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, we were one of the first organizations to put on an online conference. And it was a huge success. The benefits for with it, we now have all of that content recorded. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's available to our, to our members. Mm -hmm. um, we even put on a student mentoring day that was on this platform. Mm -hmm. And it is recorded too. So, you know, we're intentional about what we do. And, and we value all members at all levels. I'm just going to say it's also wonderful to have this growing platform to bring awareness to this. Sometimes there's mm -hmm. communities or groups that you can join, but they seem almost, um, I don't want to say elitist, but harder to find and right. harder to know you can get involved and you can do these things. And so, again, that's another reason why we have this podcast is to make people aware as yeah. early as possible. It's not just IIDA. It's not just... ISMD, like th there's plenty of other organizations that speak to the empowerment I think we're looking for. Right, and get involved with one, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. Yeah. Jump yeah. in, pick one and, pick see one and get involved with it. Yeah. You know, with it is not the, the be all end all, yeah. and it may not be the perfect one for every person. Yeah. Um, but pick one and get involved and you will not regret it. Mm -hmm. you know? But I would probably say oh, this is all, don't think that you've got to do all of them at the same no, time yeah. because you can't no. keep up with everything no. and so yeah start slow we work your way in find your way around those types yeah. of things now the conference um does it does it take place in different cities every year um how, how do you get like how can someone um uh attend do, mm -hmm. uh, like, do you have to be a involved? member like those kinds yeah. of things well obviously anyone can attend you can find out more information at with it.org events are are annual conference if you get a with it scholarship we bring all of those scholarship students to the conference that's part of their scholarship i know you've had mm -hmm. several of your students attend that way and it's a great opportunity for a student to come um, we do a whole program we try to shepherd them <laughs> make sure they know what they're doing um, but you know there are other industry conferences i know the bean and stock library has a really important design conference that they do where they bring students to high point so there there are other things but um you know and if you need a scholarship to a conference you call me and, yeah. or send me an email uh, i have a hard time saying no 
I think we all appreciate that advice um, and just the encouragement for inclusion and to continue to put yourself out there right. on a daily basis. Right. And, you know, I find students are, they are just too shy. You know, it is the persistent kind of driven students who, who you know, jump right in. Mm -hmm. right. But you have to remember that everybody is welcome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you feel shy about it, we, we connect you with somebody and yeah. hook you up. And, um, you know, we definitely had members who seemed a little shy until we, yeah. you know, got them in, let them meet a few people, and it's it's a good experience. And like you said, people of all ages, too. I mean, it, say you just made this switch in the furnishings industry, or you're just making this switch in interior right. design, and you're not the youngest in the room either doing that. I think there's mm -hmm. also going to be, you're going to be a little bit shyer. You're going to be a little bit nervous, but I, I always find joy too in some of the panels that we watch and there's several people that are just shooting their hands up, asking questions after it's all over continuously. It's like, it's going right. back to the same person. Those are the people that are energetic to learn and absorb. And we keep saying that term sponge, but to see that everything that there is to offer and continue to get those resources and utilize them while you have them available. Utilize them, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the other thing, too, is um, don't be afraid to step out. And you may find that interior design is not exactly the thing that you want to do. Yeah. You might be better at sales mm -hmm. and find a real opportunity there. You, Because sales is relationships. Yep. That, that talking to people and relating to people may be just what you need. Mm -hmm. Or um, showroom design. Yeah. You know, you might want to... Be the person that puts the fat picks the right. fabrics for for um, furniture, which is called merchandising, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know that. So you, the more you meet people, the more careers you find, the more uh, you probably will change <laughs> what what it is that you want to do. Right. So I think this is this is a point where I can ask what it normally would be our, our final question. But okay. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm going to turn it into two. Okay. All right. And so they're going to be bookends. And so one is going to be, fast forward 10 years, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you see, what do you hope for with it? Like just what's, yeah, mm -hmm. where, where is with it at that point? What do you think? Um, in 10 years, mm -hmm. I hope with it is still, uh, I still want it to be a warm and inviting and inclusive community, but I'd like it to be double the size. Yeah. And I'd like it to have really vibrant events at more of the markets so that we it's not just feeling at high point mm -hmm. but we you know we have some uh, networking in Las Vegas and Dallas but I'd like that to be a good piece the other piece is I really want to see more CEOs in the C-suite and I want with it to keep preparing women to take that and to feel that they could take that next opportunity mm -hmm. now an interior designer probably isn't on that track but there are lots of women who need that extra push and um, you know I'd like with it to keep have more women in the c-suite mm -hmm. yeah I, and I think that's that's a great um, a great aspiration mm -hmm. um, so Paige had mentioned the the wow awards the other day yes. and so I was lucky enough to be to be part of that and one of the award winners you, um, for mentorship. You received a WOW oh, award from thank me. You. Thank yes. you. Yes. But um, so there were there were two males who, who won right. out of out of a, a, a group of ten. Um, amazing, amazing female uh, heads of, of companies and designers and, and all kinds of things. And the the other male um, uh, winner, he started his his remarks saying. When I first got this, I was about to turn it down because I figured, why, why me? Like this needs to go to someone else. And then they said, well, why not me? Because it needs to be, it needs to be everyone mm -hmm. trying to uh, trying to build up and and uh, to, to yeah to to empower women. And and mm -hmm. I think that was that was something that was very um, it resonated with me a lot. And a lot of most the majority of my students are, are female, um, and I think that's that's something that that I see, I see my daughter, I, I, I want, I want that, I want to build right. that world. So I think that's, that's something that's really, really kind of beautiful thinking about that, that, that we want to, we want to double our, our population. Right. And it's not only the members, but we want to double the population of, of, of CEOs and of, of designers and, and, and whatnot that are, that have that power. Right, right. So second part. Is there a question there? Yep. Yeah. No, no, that was the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, could I make absolutely. a comment there? Mm -hmm. So 
why is it import, still important for, for women? There is absolute research out there that women are less likely to take opportunities and they're also less likely to um, take an opportunity that's a stretch than, than men. And the important part is that we need to keep empowering women to believe that I can take that job. So a man, uh, a woman will look at a job and say, oh, well, I can't do all those things, so I shouldn't apply for that. Mm -hmm. And a man will not. We got to keep saying that. And that's why, you know, I've had people ask me, how can I help the women on my team? And I say, you push them. You push them a little bit more. You give them the opportunities, you know, you don't just let the loudest person in the room be the one that takes that stretch opportunity. Maybe you push somebody that you see the potential in. To teach them confidence. To teach yeah. them confidence. And it's it's as much confidence as just feeling that they yeah. can. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And of course, at with it, we say <laughs> if you don't know how to do it, reach out to somebody and they will help you figure out what you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. I have, we have a text string with all of my former <laughs> hosts and I think I, we, so we share memes and all kinds of things uh -huh. back and forth and whatnot. I think I shared one not too long ago that was, if you spend enough time with me, you'll believe that you can do anything. Right. So yeah, I think that's, right. that's, that's really important. And uh, I like to be that. I, I like to think of myself as Ted Lasso. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so now we'll go to that final question, mm -hmm. which is, if, and, and it's going to go in the opposite direction and say, if, if you could go back now to your student self, knowing everything that you've, you've experienced up to this point, is there a piece of advice that you would give, give yourself? And, and, and I mean, specifically about you at that point, but just right. students in general. I mean, we've given a lot of advice mm -hmm. and, and whatnot, but your own personal journey, like. Well, you, you know what I just did? Mm -hmm. Because I, I did not take that reach opportunity that was offered to me. Right. And part of it was fear and lack of, just feeling like, I don't think I can do that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't take that on. Right. And so I turned down a big opportunity and I do regret that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, 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 yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm, I'm preaching it mm -hmm. yeah, now. But I mean, luckily that led to everything else. Correct. So, I feel yeah. like I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. Yeah. Right. And maybe that other place was not what, it, it's not right. all my skills, mm -hmm. right. you know, yeah. And that's everything about this organic path that we keep talking about. I mean, right. there's always going to be a handful of regret perhaps, but that's why we're teaching the younger generation. Your career is a journey. Yeah. It's a, it's a journey and it's never going to be a straight line. Mm -hmm. It's right. always going to be a winding path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you so much Thanks for, for joining us. We really appreciate this. it. It was a wonderful conversation. Um, and if you enjoyed this conversation, please make sure to like and follow and subscribe all of our different platforms and to make sure to tune in next week as the conversation continues. From a student's perspective. We hope you liked this discussion with the design industry from a student's perspective. Please like, share, and comment, and stay tuned for more inspiring conversations to come.